It was the summer of 1975. My younger sister and I, we were bickering again. And this time it was about who had the fastest bike. I knew that her mean green cycling machine was no match for my gold, fully decked out bike with the glittery banana seat, the tall sissy bar. But the debate raged on. Our next door neighbor, Jim, he decided to take matters into his own hand and resolve the debate and said, well, why don't we race the two bikes? So he had his two sons um, race our bikes. Kevin, the more athletic one, rode my bike, and Mike, his older brother, went and rode my sister's bike. And the race started here, and it went around the block. And guess whose bike was the fastest? Of course it was my bike. I had the fastest bike, and I was elated, and I had to tell everyone about it until the next day. Jim came home, and he decided to switch it up a little bit and suggested that we have a rematch, and this time switch the riders on the bikes. So Kevin rode my sister's bike, and Mike rode mine, and we did the race again. And guess who won the race? Guess whose bike was fastest? Yup. It was my sister's bike. I was devastated. I learned an important lesson that day. It's not the bike, it's the rider. And interestingly enough, this lesson continues to show itself throughout my life. For example, some of you may remember this book, Good to Great, by Jim Collins. It was released in early 2000 for businesses, or rather its leaders, helping them to be just good, to be great. And one of the key concepts was about getting the right people on the bus, whether that bus was a team, a group, an organization, a department, or even a project. Because for Jim Collins, his point was to be great or successful, it wasn't necessarily about the what as much as it was about the who. Some of you may recognize this as Caesar Milan with his dog, Junior. Some people think that Caesar is a dog trainer, but he calls himself a dog behaviorist. People come to him all the time with their dogs, and their misbehaving dogs, and say, fix my dog. But that's not what Caesar does. If you were to ask Caesar, he would say that he rehabilitates dogs and he trains people. Because for Caesar, it's not about the dog, it's about the human owner. So what does this have to do with Hadoop? Actually, a lot. So for starters, what we know about big, big, do, uh, big data and Hadoop is that the market is growing. They're estimating that by the year 2020, it's going to be a 60 billion plus market. We also know that the success rate is meh, you know, and I know that might be a little bit controversial, but with big data implementations, there's a lot of research reports and surveys coming out that's showing that the success rate is in the 25 to 30, 33% rate. But the more important discussion is, what are some of these barriers to success? And what we're finding is that if you look at the results, usually about two-thirds of the issues that are stated as barriers are actually related to people and not technology. So again, it's not necessarily about the technology, it's also about the people too. So to be successful for, uh, with Hadoop, what are we supposed to do as we the people? I'd like to introduce you to the ABVs for the aspiring Hadoopist. Agility. This one is very important. As a cyclist, you need to be making, um, you need to be agile because you're making quick decisions all of the time on the direction you're going, on your speed, on who and what is around you. And it's no different with Hadoop. Hadoop is evolving at an incredible rate. And to keep up, you need to be agile. You need to be nimble. You need to make decisions quickly. Hadoop is flexible, but we need to be flexible too. So remember, be agile, because this is not your grandfather's or even your mother's software anymore. Next is balance. Anyone who's tried to ride the bike, if you do not master the skill of balance, it's game over. You have no reason to be on a bike. 
And it's the same when it comes to newer technologies like Hadoop. It's important to maintain that balance. Whether it's a balance between older technologies and newer technologies, whether it's a balance between what the business needs and what IT is going to deliver, or it's between maintaining the status quo and being innovative. So maintain good balance. And if you do fall off, quickly get back up on your bike and keep going. And last is vision. Not only is it the art or power of seeing, but it is also the art and power of imagination. As a cyclist, you have to negotiate multiple fields of vision at the same time. You have to look what's directly in front of you. There might be a pothole or a sharp object or the, the road is slick. You also need to be aware of what's around you, whether it's other cyclists, pedestrians, cars, dogs, kids. And you also need to be aware of what's down the road so that you can make adjustments to your current journey if needed. To not negotiate these multiple fields of vision is, to, is a recipe for disaster. For Hadoop, we need to negotiate the immediate, short-term, and long-term vision for our big data projects. And yes, we can't be afraid to use our imaginations. So while I have no doubt that technologies like Hadoop will take us far on our data journey, it's going to be up to us as aspiring Hadoopists to ride it on home. Thank you.